syntax director definitions. In this video, we are going to see about syntax directed definitions. Syntax directed definitions. Syntax directed definitions are a generalization of context free grammars in which Grammar symbols have an associated set of attributes. Productions are associated with semantic rules for computing the values of attributes. Such formalism generates annotated parse trees where each node of the tree is a record with a field for each attribute. Example, x colon a indicates the attribute A of the grammar symbol X. The value of an attribute of a grammar symbol at a given parse tree node is defined by a semantic rule associated with the protection used at that node. We distinguish between two kinds of attributes. Synthesized attributes, inherited attributes, synthesized attributes. They are computed from the values of the attributes of the children nodes. Inherited attributes. They are computed from the values of the attributes of both the siblings and the parent nodes. Form of syntax director definitions. Each production, A produce alpha, is associated with a set of semantic rules. B is equal to F of C1, C2 up to CK, where F is a function and either B is a synthesized attribute of A and C1, C2 up to CK are attributes of the grammar symbols of the production or B is an inherited attribute of a grammar symbol in alpha and C1, C2 up to CK are attributes of grammar symbols in or attributes of A. Note 1. Terminal symbols are assumed to have synthesized attributes supplied by the lexical analyzer. Note 2. Procedure calls, example, print in the next slide, define values of dummy synthesized attributes of the non-terminal on the left-hand side of the protection. Example, let us consider the grammar for arithmetic expressions. The syntax director definition associates to each non-terminal a synthesized attribute called val. Syntax tree construction. In this video, we are going to see about syntax tree construction. We use the following function to create the nodes of the syntax tree for expression with binary operator. Each function returns a pointer to a newly created node. MK node, that is, op comma left comma right creates an operator node with label op and two fields containing pointers to left and right mk leaf that is id comma entry creates an identifier node with label id and a field containing entry a pointer to the symbol table entry for the identifier
mk leaf that is number comma val creates a number node with label number and a field containing val the value of the number example construct syntax tree for a minus 4 plus c p1 mk leaf that is id comma entry for a p2 mk leaf of number comma 4 p3 mk node of minus comma p1 comma p2 p4 mk leaf of id comma entry for c p5 mk node of plus comma p3 comma p4 bottom up evolution of s attributed definitions in this video we are going to see about bottom up evolution of s attributed definitions synthesized attributes can be evaluated by a bottom up parser as the input is being analyzed avoiding the construction of a dependency graph The parser keeps the values of the synthesized attributes in its stack. Whenever a reduction A produce alpha is made, the attribute for A is computed from the attributes of alpha which appear on the stack. Thus, a translator for an S attributed definition can be simply implemented by extending the stack of an LR parser. Extending a parser stack. Extra fields are added to the stack to hold the values of synthesized attributes. In the simple case of just one attribute per grammar symbol, the stack has two fields, state and val. The current top of the stack is indicated by the pointer variable top. Synthesized attributes are computed just before each reduction. Before the reduction A factorial, x, y, z is made. The attribute for a is computed. a is equal to f of val top comma val top minus 1 comma val top minus 2. Extending a parser stack an example. Example, consider the s attributed definitions for the arithmetic expressions. To evaluate attributes, the parser executes the following code. The auxiliary variable ntop is set to the new top of the stack when a reduction. A produce alpha is done with modulus of alpha is equal to r, then ntop is equal to top minus r plus 1. After the reduction is done, top is set to n top. During a shift action, both the token and its value are pushed into the stack. Extending a parser stack, an example. The following figure shows the moves made by the parser on input 3 into 5 plus 4n. Stack states are replaced by their corresponding grammar symbol. Instead of the token digit, the actual value is shown. Evaluating L attributed definitions. In this video, we are going to see about Evaluating L-Attributed Definitions
Evaluating L Attributed Definitions L Attributed Definitions contain both synthesized and inherited attributes but do not need to build a dependency graph to evaluate them. Synthesized value is obtained from attributes of child nodes in the parse tree. Inherited value is obtained from the parent node in the parse tree. A syntax directed definition is L attributed if each inherited attribute of xj in a production A produce x1 up to xj up to xn depends only on the attributes of the symbols to the left that is this is what l in l attributed stands for of xj comma that is x1 x2 up to xj minus 1 and the inherited attributes of a theorem Inherited attributes in L attributed definitions can be computed by a pre order traversal of the parse tree. L attributed definitions are a class of syntax directed definitions whose attributes can always be evaluated by single traversal of the parse tree. The following procedure evaluates L attributed definitions by mixing post order that is synthesized and pre order that is inherited traversal. Algorithm L evil that is N node input node of an annotated parse tree output attribute evaluation begin. For each child M of N from left to right to begin. Evaluate inherited attributes of M. L eval of M. End. Evaluate synthesized attributes of N. End. Overview of top down translation. In this video, we are going to see about overview of top-down translation. Overview of top-down translation. We can evaluate semantic rules during the bottom-up parsing of the input for L attributed definitions. We can evaluate semantic rules for L attributed definitions during the top down parsing of tile input. Consider the syntax director definition presented that is reproduced below for convenience for discussing about top down translation. The SDD, that is Syntax Directed Definition, describes a desktop calculator that takes an expression involving constants as input and emits out the evaluated result. The input and the corresponding output for the SDD. We have seen syntax analysis that left Recursive grammar cannot be passed using top-down parsing method. The productions 2, 3, 5 and 6 above exhibit left recursion. We need to transform these productions to remove the left recursion. The transformation to eliminate the left recursion should also take into account the rearrangement of semantic actions. 
Let's look at how to transform any left recursive grammar and its semantic rules to be non-left recursive. Consider a left recursive grammar. In the syntax director definition, a dot a, b dot b, c dot c are synthesized attributes. F1 and F2 are arbitrary functions. The resultant translation scheme after the elimination of left recursion and the rearrangement of the semantic actions from the syntax director definition. This grammar recognizes the same sentences as the original grammar. Using the principle, we eliminate left recursion in the productions 2, 3, 5, and 6 of the syntax directed definition and also transform it to a translation scheme. The resulting translation scheme is suitable for top-down translation Now that we have a translation scheme suitable for top-down translation, the next step is to code a top-down translator that uses the translation scheme. We shall implement a recursive descent parser and include functionality of evaluating the attributes. We have seen that a recursive descent parser is a collection of procedures, one for each non-terminal. Each procedure is responsible for parsing the constructs defined by its non-terminal. The guidelines helps us build a top-down translator from a translation scheme similar to the one These guidelines can be used for building a top-down translator for any translation scheme originating from a L attributor definition. For each non-terminal n, we construct a function n that returns success or failure depending on whether it was able to expand the non-terminal correctly or not. The function n takes in formal parameters for each inherited attribute and the synthesized attributes of n. The inherited attributes are used in the function to compute the dependent attributes of n or any one of its children. The synthesized attributes that come in as formal parameters of n are usually passed by reference so that the value can be derived and populated inside the function. The function for n would typically have a local variable for each attribute of the grammar symbols that appear in a protection for n. For example, Consider productions 2, 3, and 4 governing the non-terminal expression underscore rest. Program Based on the guideline mentioned above, the productions 3, 4, and 5 would result in the function. We derived the value of synthesized attribute lexeme of the terminal constant from the lexical analyzer and stored it in the variable constant. Lexeme declared for the attribute constant dot lexeme. Analysis of syntax directed definitions. In this video, we are going to see about 
Analysis of Syntax Directed Definitions Attributes were evaluated during a traversal of a tree using a set of mutually recursive functions. The function for a non-terminal mapped the values of the inherited attributes at a node to the values of the synthesized attributes at that node. The approach extends to translations that cannot be performed during a single depth first traversal. Here, we shall use a separate function for each synthesized attribute of each non-terminal. Although groups of synthesized attributes can be evaluated by a single function, The construction deals with a special case in which all synthesized attributes form one group. The grouping of attributes is determined from the dependencies set up by the semantic rules in a syntax-directed definition. Recursive Evaluation of Attributes The dependency graph for a parse tree is formed by pasting together smaller graphs corresponding to the semantic rules for a production. The dependency graph DP for production P is based only on the semantic rules for a single production, that is, on the semantic rule for the synthesized attributes of the left side and the inherited attributes of the grammar symbols on the right side of the production. That is, the graph DP shows local dependencies only. A close look at the dependency graph for the parse tree shows that the attributes of each instance of non-terminal E must be evaluated in the order E.S, E.I, E.T. Note that all attributes can be evaluated in three passes. A bottom-up pass to evaluate the S attributes, a top-down pass to evaluate the I attributes, and a final bottom-up pass to evaluate the T attributes. In a recursive evaluator, the function for a synthesized attribute takes the values of some of the inherited attributes as parameters. In general, if synthesized attribute A.A can depend on inherited attribute A.B, then the function for A.A takes A.B as a parameter. Strongly non-circular syntax director definitions Recursive evaluators can be constructed for a class of syntax directed definitions called strongly non-circular definitions. For a definition in this class, the attributes at each node for a non-terminal can be evaluated according to the same, that is partial order. Function et of n, i begin case production at node n of e produce e1, e2, i l is equal to fill of i, t1 is equal to et of child into n, 1, i l, i2 is equal to f i2 of i, t2 is equal to et into child into n, 2 into i2. Written ft of t1, t2. e produce id. Written h of i. Default, error, end, function, sr of n, 
begin s is equal to es of child into n comma 1 i is equal to g of s t is equal to et of child into n comma 1 into i return t end when we construct the function for a synthesized attribute of the non terminal this order is used to select the inherited attributes that become the parameters of the function. We give a definition of this class and show that the syntax directed definition falls in the class. We then give an algorithm for testing circularity and strong non-circularity and show how the implementation extends to all strongly non-circular definitions. Consider non-terminal A at a node N in a parse tree. The dependency graph for the parse tree may in general have paths that start at an attributes of node N go through attributes of other nodes in the parse tree and end at another attribute of n. Let production P have non-terminals A1, A2 up to An occurring on the right side. Let Rag be partial order on the attributes of Aj, 1 less than or equal to J less than or equal to N. Then dp of ra1, ra2 up to ran for the graph obtained by edges to dp as follows. If raj orders attribute aj.b before aj.c, then add an edge from aj.b to aj.c. A syntax director definition is said to be strongly non circular. If for each non-tensional A, we can find a partial order RA on the attributes of A such that for each production P with left side A and non-terminals A1, A2 up to AN occurring on the right side. DP of RA1, RA2 up to RAN in a cyclic and if there is an edge from attribute a dot b to a dot c in dot db r a 1 comma r a 2 up to r a n then r a orders a dot b before a a circularity test a syntax directed definition is said to be circular if the dependency graph for some parse tree has a cycle, circular definitions are ill-formed and meaningless. There is no way we can begin to compute any of the attribute values on the cycle. Computing the partial orders that ensures that a definition is strongly non-circular is closely related to testing if a definition is circular. Overview of type systems. In this video, we are going to see about overview of type systems. The design of a type checker for a language is based on information about the syntactic constructs in the language, the notion of types and the rules for assigning types to language constructs. For example, if both operands of the arithmetic operators of plus, minus and multiplication are of type integer, then the result is of type integer. Type expressions The type of a language construct will be denoted by a type expression. A type expression is either a basic type or is formed by applying an operator called a type constructor to other type expressions. 
The set of basic types and constructors depend on the language to be checked. The following are the definitions of the type expressions. Basic types such as Boolean, char, integer, real are type expressions. A special basic type, comma, type underscore error will signal an error during type checking. Void denoting the absence of a value allows statements to be checked. Since type expressions may be named, a type name is a type expression. A type constructor applied to type expressions is a type expression. Constructors include Arrays. If t is a type expression, then array i, t is a type expression denoting the type of an array with elements of type t and index set i. Products. If t1 and t2 are type expressions, then their Cartesian product t1 into t2 is a type expression. Records. The difference between a record and a product is that the fields of a record have names. The record type constructor will be applied to a tuple formed from field names and field types. For example, type row is equal to record, address integer, lexi array of 1.15 of char, n variable table array of 1 up to 101 of row declares the type name row representing the type expression record that is address into integer into lexeme into array of 1 up to 15 character and the variable table to be an array of records of this type Pointers. If t is a type expression, then pointer t is a type expression denoting the type pointer to an object of type t. For example, var p higher precedence row declares variable p to have type pointer that is row. Functions. A function in programming languages maps a domain type d to a range type R. The type of such function is denoted by the type expression D produce R. Type expressions may contain variables whose values are type expressions. Tree representation for care into care produce pointer that is integer. Type systems A type system is a collection of rules for assigning type expressions to the various parts of a program. A type checker implements a type system. It is specified in a syntax-directed manner. Different type systems may be used by different compilers or processors of the same language. Static and dynamic checking of types. Checking done by a compiler is said to be static, while checking is done when the target program runs is termed dynamic. Any check can be done dynamically if the target code carries the type of an element along with the value of that element. Sound type system. A sound type system eliminates the need for dynamic checking for type errors because it allows us to determine statically that these errors cannot occur when the target program runs.
That is, if a sound type system assigns a type other than type underscore error to a program part, then type errors cannot occur when the target code for the program part is run. Strongly typed language A language is strongly typed if its compiler can guarantee that the programs it accepts will execute without type errors. Error Recovery Since type checking has the potential for catching errors in program, it is desirable for type checker to recover from errors so it can check the rest of the input. Error handling has to be designed into the type system right from the start. The type checking rules must be prepared to cope with the errors. Simple Type Checker Specification In this video, we are going to see about Simple Type Checker Specification. We specify a type checker for a simple language in which the type of each identifier must be declared before the identifier is used. The type checker is a translation scheme that synthesizes the type of each expression from the types of its sub-expressions. The type checker can handle arrays pointers, statements, and functions. A simple language. Consider the following grammar. P produce D, E. D produce D, D, or ID, T. T produce care or integer or array, number of T or apparel T. E produce literal or number or ID or E mod E or E E or E apparel. Translation scheme P produce D E D produce D D D produce ID T at T produce care T produce integer, T, T produce apparel T1, T, T produce array number of T1, T add type ID dot entry, comma T dot type. T dot type is equal to care. T dot type is equal to integer. T dot type is equal to pointer of T1 dot type. T dot type is equal to array of 1 up to number dot val, comma, T1 dot type. In the above language, there are two basic types, char and integer. Type underscore error is used to signal errors. The prefix operator higher precedence builds a pointer type, example, Higher precedence integer leads to the type expression pointer that is integer. Type checking of expressions. In the following rules, the attribute type for E gives the type expression assigned to the expression generated by E. E produce literal E dot type colon equal to care. E produce number, E dot type colon equal to integer. Here, constants represented by the tokens literal and number have type char and integer. E produce ID, E dot type colon equal to lookup of ID dot entry. Lookup of E is used to fetch the type saved in the symbol table entry pointed to by E. 
e produce e1 mod e2 e dot type colon equal to if e1 dot type is equal to integer and e2 dot type is equal to integer than integer else type underscore error the expression formed by applying the mod operator to two sub expressions of type integer has type integer otherwise its type is type underscore error e produce e1 of e2 e dot type colon equal to if e2 dot type is equal to integer and e1 dot type is equal to array of s comma t then t else type underscore error if an array reference e1 of e2 the index expression e2 must have type integer the result is the element type t obtained from the type array s comma t of e1 e produce e1 higher precedency e dot type colon equal to if e1 dot type is equal to pointer of t then t else type underscore error the postfix operator higher precedency yields the object pointer to by its operand the type of e higher precedency is the type t of the object pointer to by the pointer e type checking of statements statements do not have values hence the basic type void can be assigned to them if an error is detected within a statement and then type underscore error is assigned translation scheme for checking the type of statements assignment statement s produce id colon equal to e s dot type colon equal to if id dot type is equal to e dot type then void else type underscore error conditional statement s produce if e then s1 s dot type colon equal to if e dot type is equal to boolean then s1 dot type else type underscore error while statement s produce while e do s1 s dot type colon equal to if e dot type is equal to boolean then s1 dot type else type underscore error sequence of statements s produce s1 comma s2 s dot type colon equal to if s1 dot type is equal to void and s1 dot type is equal to void then void else type underscore error type checking of functions the rule for checking the type of a function application is e produce e1 of e2 e dot type colon equal to if e2 dot type is equal to s and e1 dot type is equal to s produce t then t else type underscore error type equivalence in this video we are going to see about type equivalence type equivalence is used by the type checking to check whether the two type expressions are equivalent or not it can be done by checking the equivalence between the two types The rule used for type checking works as follows. If two type expressions are equal, then return a certain type else return a type error function. When two type expressions are equivalent, we need a precise definition of both the expressions. When names are given to type expressions, 
and these names are further used in subsequent type expressions. It may result in potential ambiguities. The key issue is whether a name in a type expression stands for itself or it is an abbreviation for another type expression. There are two schemes to check type equivalence of expressions. Structural equivalence Structural equivalence needs a graph to represent the type expressions. The two type expressions are said to be structurally equivalent if and only if they hold any of the following conditions. They are of identical basic type. Same type constructor has been applied to equivalent types to construct the type expressions. A type name of one represents the other. Name equivalence. If type names are treated as standing for themselves, then the first two conditions of structural equivalence lead to another equivalence of type expressions called name equivalence. In other words, name equivalence considers types to be equal if and only if the same type names are used and one of the first two conditions of structure equivalence holds. For example, consider the following few types and variable declarations. In these statements, var1 and var2 are name equivalent, so are var3 and var4 because their type names are same. However, var1 and var3 are not name equivalent because their type names are different. Concept of Type Conversion In this video, we are going to see about concept of type conversion. Concept of Type Conversion Consider expressions like x plus i where x is of type float and i is of type integer. Since the representation of integers and floating point numbers is different within a computer and different machine instructions are used for operations on integers and floats, the compiler may need to convert one of the operands of plus to ensure that both operands are of the same type when the addition occurs. Suppose that integers are converted to floats when necessary using a unary operator that is float. For example, the integer 2 is converted to a float in the code for the expression 2 into 3.14. T1 is equal to float 2. T2 is equal to T1 into 3.14. We can extend such examples to consider integer and float versions of the operators. For example, int into for integer operands and float into for floats. Type synthesis will be illustrated by extending the scheme for translating expressions. We introduce another attribute e.type whose value is either integer or float. The rule associated with E produce E1 plus E2 builds on the pseudocode. If E1 dot type is equal to integer and E2 dot type is equal to integer, E dot type is equal to integer, comma, else if 
e1 dot type is equal to float and e2 dot type is equal to integer As the number of types subject to conversion increases, the number of cases increases rapidly. Therefore, with large numbers of types, careful organization of the semantic actions becomes important. Type conversion rules vary from language to language. The rules for Java distinguish between widening conversions which are intended to preserve information and narrowing conversions which can lose information. The widening rules are given by the hierarchy. Any type lower in the hierarchy can be widened to a higher type Thus, a char can be widened to an int or to a float, but a char cannot be widened to a short. The narrowing rules are illustrated by the graph. Types can be narrowed to a type t if there is a path from s to t. Note that char, comma, short and byte are pairwise convertible to each other. Conversion from one type to another is said to be implicit if it is done automatically by the compiler. Implicit type conversions, also called cohesions, are limited in many languages to widening conversions. Type checking. Conversion is said to be explicit if the programmer must write something to cause the conversion. Explicit conversions are also called cast. The semantic action for checking E produce E1 plus E2 uses two functions. Max of t1, t2 takes two types, t1 and t2, and returns the maximum or least upper bound of the two types in the widening hierarchy. It declares an error if either t1 or t2 is not in the hierarchy. Example, if either type is an array or a pointer type. Widen of a, t, w generates type conversions if needed to widen an address a of type t into a value of type w. It returns a itself if t and w are the same type. Otherwise, it generates an instruction to do the conversion and place the result in a temporary t which is returned as the result. Pseudocode for widen, assuming that the only types are integer and float. Program 